Welcome to our very special weekly broadcast, One Heart Church. We obviously have been blessed to celebrate a great Easter, and now we are moving back into our study on being faithful, uh, what it means to live, come before God, to live in community, to, to walk on mission before God, and knowing you're accomplishing what he intended. Today, we look at what it means to live your story, because all of us have an amazing story of the impact of the gospel, of our calling to accomplish his purpose, of our commitment uh, to walk faithfully before him, of our yieldedness to experience his love and peace at work in our hearts, of our wisdom of knowing that he is first in all things. The truth is, he is our ambition. Uh, we choose to please him no matter what. And so today, as you think about that, we begin to walk through uh, really what happened with Paul because he makes it very clear how easy it would be to be deceived and be moved away from your story being all that God intended. So today I ask you a question, what does your story say about you? Or would people, if they read your story a hundred years from now, would they say that was a man of woman or woman of faith? That was a young man who lived for Jesus. That was a young lady who had a pursuit of God. What would the story read like? Because the truth is, the story that reads the best is a reflection of our commitments, our love, and our understanding of his purpose. Our commitments, our love, and our understanding of his purpose. Because if we're committed to the right things and we love the Lord with all of our heart, as he commanded us to do, then we're going to discover more and more of what his purpose is for our life. We'll understand how to operate in an effective way. So here's the question. Ask yourself three very distinct questions. What are your commitments? In other words, what are you committed to? Secondly, who do you love? Do you love Jesus more than any, anyone or anything, anything you will ever face? And finally, how clear is his purpose in your life? Do you understand, for example, this is what he would have you do. This is the way walk in it, uh, as Scripture talks about in Isaiah. The truth is that you and I have the opportunity to encounter him as he writes a beautiful story about our lives. But if we're not careful, we'll be deceived and moved away from the very best that God had for us. And so that's why we find ourselves today in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Look at it with me if you would. And notice if you would, uh, three verses I'd like to look at. Verse three, first of all. But I'm afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by, by his craftiness, your minds will be led astray from the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. We'll come back to that in a few moments. Then look on if you would, verse five. For I consider myself not in the least inferior to the most eminent apostles. What he said was, here's what I know. My story reads just as effectively as someone else's. God wrote the story. I've chose, I chose to live it out. And as a result, I'm not inferior in any way. In other words, his perspective about himself uh, was spot on to becoming who God wanted him to be and accomplishing what he, God intended for him to accomplish. Look on if you would, verse 31. One final verse I want you to see because as you look at it, you, you begin to see he, bring, he, he notes that the God and Father, Lord Jesus, he who is blessed forever knows that I am not lying. And so what you discover is as you read this chapter in its entirety, you begin to realize that this is a place where Paul understood that if he was to be effective in impacting those who were reading his letter and listening to his story and hearing his voice, then they would have to come to, to grips with some concepts and some principles that would be very key to their entire journey of faith. And so what I want you to do today is walk through that with me. And so here's the challenge. The challenge in this particular chapter is that we understand that we have to stay close to Jesus. He's the author of our story. In other words, we can't move away. We can't complicate our faith. We can't disconnect our purpose. We can't miss out on who we love. We have to be very careful to stay close to Jesus. The key verse is verse 31, because what he makes clear here is there's nothing deceptive about what he's trying to accomplish. It's very clear that he makes a statement that God and Father of the Lord Jesus, he, he who is blessed forever, knows that I'm not lying. In other words, what he said, under the auspices of God, I'm telling you the truth that will help you become who you're supposed to be and allow your story to be an amazing story that you live out before those that you know and those you love. The application is clear. We must choose faithfulness over the flesh. And in chapter 11, he makes it clear, the flesh must not rule. So let's look at three very distinctive dynamics that form a triangle of thought around our understanding of how we live out our story in a way 
that's most effective, most meaningful, and most powerful, all right? The first thing we see is the importance of understanding the battle is real. Look, if you would, beginning in verse 1 of this text, and notice what he says, I wish that you would bear with me in a little foolishness, but indeed you are bearing with me. For I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy, for I betrothed you to one husband, so that to Christ I might present you as a pure virgin. But I am afraid that as as the serpent deceived even by his craftiness, your mind will be led astray from the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. For if one comes and preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or you have or you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you bear this beautifully. So he's saying, you know what, you, you understand, hey, this plays out a certain way. Be wise in how you allow it to affect your life. So two things he talks about in verse 3 that are very key. The simplicity and purity of devotion. Let's talk about simplicity for a moment. Because what he makes clear to you and me is the secret to our vital connection with God. Is keeping it as a child. Loving Jesus in a simple and amazing and pure way. Allowing that love to guide us and direct us and sustain us in whatever it is that we're encountering by simplicity, keeping it simple. We keep it simple because we know who is profound. That is the Lord at work in our hearts and lives. What's most profound is the truth that sets us free to accomplish his purpose. The second thing you see, he, I, he identifies here, when it comes to the battle being real, because he said, if you're not careful, you'll get into a battle that's bigger than you realized. And that's exactly what happens to lots of folks. But what he talks about is the purity of devotion. And here he's talking about the discipline of a childlike faith. The ability to trust him no matter what. To yield to his plan with perfect simplicity, but also perfect purity. To yield in understanding that he has something in store for us. The battle is real. You and I have to understand something. That all through history, he begins by referencing Eve. The truth is, all through history, there have been those who fought battles, but then missed their opportunity because they chose to go a different way. They complicated their world. They chose to, to go too deep into something and couldn't grasp it, and as a result, lost everything. Listen carefully. The battle is real enough for you and I to understand that Jesus is the key to it all. He's the key to your heart. He's the key to your life. He's the key to my heart. He's the key to my life. That's what makes the battle so real. We have to contend with what the enemy tries to do. Then beginning in verse 5 through verse 15, he makes it clear that the accusations brought against us that affect us the most are always personal. Look at verse 5, you would with me. For I consider myself not in the, in the, in the least inferior to the most eminent apostle. But even if I am unskilled in speech, yet I have not, I'm not so in knowledge. In fact, in every way we have made this evident to you in all things. Or did I com commit a sin in humbling myself so that you might be exalted because I preached the gospel of God to you without charge? I robbed other churches by taking wages from them to serve you. And when I present, when I was present with you and, and was in need, I was not a burden to anyone. For when the brethren came from Macedonia, they fully supported supplied my need and in everything I kept myself from being a burden to you and will continue to do so as the truth of Christ is in me this boasting of mine will not be stopped in the region of Achaia why because I do not love you God knows I do but what I am doing I will continue to do so that I will not be cut away cut off from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in a in the matter about which they are boasting for such men are false apostles deceitful workers disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. No wonder, for even Satan decide, dis, disguises himself as an angel of light. Therefore, watch this, it is not surprising if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness, whose end will be according to their deeds. Wow. Does he not make it clear that in the end times there will be all these things coming about? And what you discover here is the battle, not only is the battle real, but the accusations are personal. And so Paul starts dealing with those. The first thing he talks about is his humility. And what you realize is he made it clear that humility opens our hearts to effectiveness. When we humble ourselves, 
He has the opportunity to exalt us in due time. When we humble ourselves, we encounter him in new and living ways. When we humble ourselves, we hear him speaking with greater clarity. When we humble ourselves, we feel his love at work in our hearts and life. When we humble ourselves, his joy rests on our life. Today, as you're watching this, it's so important for you to grasp and understand that humility does something in us. What does pride do? It steals our future. What does humility do? It opens our future. The open door to our future is us being willing to humble ourselves and trust him no matter what. I encourage you today to realize not only is the battle going to come at you, but humble yourself as you face it because you'll discover he is able to equip you to accomplish whatever needs to be ha happening inside of your life, especially when it comes to battle. The second thing you'd realize is he starts talking about these evil workers and those who are not of the light. You begin to discover, discovering his true light is essential. One of the things that, that Paul does in his chapters, he, he helps us understand that the light of Jesus is the light that burns brightest in our hearts and lives. Not the deceptive lights of the world, not the deceptive lights of people who are, who are around us and trying to influence us. No, it is the light of the gospel. It is the light of Jesus that shines on us, that allows us to discover and experience that no, no accusation formed against us is going to prosper. No accusation formed against us is going to distort our understanding. No accusation raised against us is going to cause us to miss God's best for our life. Then in verse 16 and following through the rest of the chapter, where he comes back to that real profound comment saying he's not lying no matter what, they were affirming his character. You see this, the prize is validated by how you live out your life. Look if you would and notice, again I say, verse 16, let no one think me foolish, but if you do, receive me even as foolish, so that I may also may boast a little. What I'm saying, I'm not saying as the Lord would, but as in foolishness, in this confidence of boasting, since many boast according to flesh, I will boast, I will boast also. For you being so wise, tolerate the foolish gladly. For you tolerate it if anyone enslaves you, anyone devours you, anyone takes advantage of you, anyone exalts himself, anyone hits you in the faith. To my shame, I must say that we have been weak by comparison. But in whatever respect anyone else is bold, I speak in foolishness. I am just as bold myself. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they descendants of Abraham? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I speak as if insane. I am more so in far more labor and far more imprisonments, beaten times without number, often in danger of death, five times. And he goes on to talk about all the different things that transpired in his life. What you discover is he brings that all to a very climactic understanding by helping us grasp that pain has purpose. We don't always get excited about pain. In fact, I seldom ever wake up with a pain or walk through a pain and go, you know, man, I'm just so glad I got to experience that today. No, you don't, I don't. Pain is not one of those things that we invite into our world, but it does come uninvited to become a part of our challenge. You'll notice he talks about in verse 25, beaten with rods three times, stoned three times, shipwrecked, a night and day I've spent in the deep. I've been on frequent journeys, dangers, all these different things. What is he getting across? That pain has purpose because God uses all that to accomplish what he intends. He says in verse 27, I've been in labor and hardship through many sleepless nights and hunger and thirst, often without food and cold and exposure. Apart from such external things, there is a daily pressure on me of concern for all the churches. Who is weak without my being weak? Who is led into sin without my intense concern? If I have to boast, I will boast of what pertains to my weakness. The God and Father, the Lord Jesus, he who is blessed forever knows that I am not lying. He goes on to talk about even being dropped down by a basket. You see, what Paul acknowledges, he went through all these things, but he was protected by God. And protection is afforded in faithfulness. He stayed faithful, God protected him completely. Didn't mean he didn't go through pain, didn't mean he didn't go through adversity. But through all that, God faithfully watched over him and blessed him. Today, I want to ask you a question. Did your story read about some aspect of pain and difficulty, some aspect of rejection and heartache, some aspect of, of a trial that came at you that complicated your world for a moment? And then all of a sudden you come to church by way of video today and you listen to this message and you realize that to live your story is to acknowledge that the battle is real. To live your story is to recognize that the accusations that come at you are always gonna be personal. And to live your story 
it's important for us to realize that the prize that is prepared for us is validated in the valley of pain. Today, you get to live out your story, and may you live it out in profound and amazing ways. May you be encouraged today to recognize that as Paul was going through all these things, he is helping them understand that his story may read differently than someone else, but it was written by God. It was God's will that he would go through these difficult moments so that he would even be stronger and more effective and impactful with his mission. You today, you have commitments, you have love, you have purpose. You must choose to let that be lived out so that when someone reads your story someday, they will say, that man, that young, young woman, that lady, that young man, that child, they live for Jesus. They lived out their story. And that's my prayer for you. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for every person watching. My pray, prayer is that this will bless their hearts and lives, that they will fight the battle, knowing that their story reads so much more beautiful later on, that they have endured and also, also excelled. They endured in the midst of pain and difficulty, and they excelled beyond that to have an identity that rests completely in you. The story rests in the identity of Jesus at work in each one of our hearts and lives. Bless us, Lord, as we continue to pursue you and yield ourselves to you. You are faithful. You are good. You are God who orders every step of our life out, and we trust you in that. And we bless your name today in Christ's name. Amen. Well, I want to thank you for joining me. What a delight and honor it is to always share God's word. My prayer is that this message will bless you and encourage you. And as you celebrate him on this 16th day of April, 2023, may it be the best day of your life and may your heart be blessed because you joined us in one heart. We look forward to sharing with you in the weeks to come. We pray, this, that, pray, that, we pray that God would bless and anoint everything that we're doing. May he bless our church, may he bless our lives, and may he bless each one of us to live out our story. Have a fantastic and amazing week. See you next Sunday.